Great to see you all here and great to be here with you. Let us greet each other with signs of love and peace. y'all doing? Hmm? Well, thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah, they are. They were in vogue when I bought them. <laughs> yeah, they are. Vintage. Right, there we go. They're getting to the point where they're antique. <laughs> Well, we are a wealth of peace and love, aren't we, this morning? Isn't that wonderful? And I think we're a wealth of information, too, because we've got some announcements we'd like to share with you. And one of the first ones we want to share rests completely on me. You have in your bulletin this morning that the scripture is Luke 16, 24 to 26. Well, that was a mistake on my part. That's not to reflect against our secretary. <laughs> um, it's Matthew... I don't even want to know what that was. <laughs> Matthew 16, 24 to 26. I did not put it in correctly in what I gave to the secretary. But it will, what you will hear today is the correct scripture. Uh, it just isn't from Luke. Also, in your bulletin, you have in your announcements about Kingdom Kids next week. It says in the bulletin from 2.30 until 7, or uh, thereafter, it is from 4. It is from 4, <laughs> not 2.30. Okay? Okay, so it begins at 4. just want to make that correction for you. There will be a program at 5.30 and then dinner after that. Are there any other announcements that you would like to share this morning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was not able to be here. I was teaching a class. But I want to also thank those individuals who, who came and helped in cleaning up the various things that got done yesterday. We appreciate it. We've needed it. Thank you so much for your time and your efforts. Oh, New Beginnings. Oh, yes, next Sunday. Next Sunday, right after worship service, we are having an opportunity of New Beginnings. We're going to... Bless a family that is part of our church, and we want everyone to come and be part of that. It's in your bulletin, and it's been in the newsletter and so forth. Please, and if you don't know about it, ask somebody to tell you about it. It's a great opportunity for this church, great opportunity to bless someone else. Next Sunday, right after worship. Thank you. Charlie! All right, thank you, Charlie. Thank you so much. Anyone else?
If not, let us join together in our invocation. Almighty God, every day you call us into your service to go where you would lead us and to do what you ask of us. But too often we cannot go because we are weighed down by our own desires. And we cannot do because our hands are too full of our own stuff. Free us from the burdens of our desires today, that we might be free to go and do what you desire for us. In the spirit of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us take this time to meditate on God's presence.
just need two. Ready, set, go, get up. <laughs> Who can come? Or an adult would be great. Thank you, Evan. That's one. Just one more. Thank you, Mark. Okay, you can help another time, okay? Okay. Come on in, hi, Lily. Hi, Bella. All right, I need all of y'all to come back over here, because if you're sitting there, then you can't be part of the story. Okay, so we're going to have a little story today. And this is Mark, and this is Evan, and they don't know what they're going to be doing, but they're going to follow along really well. Come on and sit down. Is everybody okay? Okay, Leah, come on, sit over here. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Thank you for bringing your offerings to our fishbowl. Okay, so really quick. You're going to be sick, and you're going to be hungry. So I want you all to act like you're sick. Maybe you have a, <laughs> a cough or something. And you're going to be really hungry. Okay? Okay. So once upon a time, there was this person who had a lot of time on her hands. She, well, not a whole lot of time, but she had a little bit of time. That's me. I had some time. And I also had a little bit of money. Mm. But, you know, I looked over and I saw a friend who was sick. And then I saw a friend who was really hungry and in need of my help. But, you know, I've got all this money and, and, I, and I, you know, what I really want, y'all, is I want some chocolate bars. Mmm. I'm going to keep this money and buy myself chocolate bars. Mmm. Well, I see my friends who are hungry. Well, but you know what? I, I think I, I really want to go buy me, me a new video game. Would be great. So I'm going to keep this $10 bill for myself. And um, then let's see. I need a new pair of shoes. You know those really spiffy Converse tennis shoes? I love them. I need a new pair. I'm going to keep all of this. I've got to get me some new tennis shoes and... I want to go to the movie and play putt-putt. Gosh, that's going to take another one and another one. And, and I really want... To, oh, I'm sorry y'all are sick. I'm sorry you're hungry. But, you know, I really want to get me a new piece of jewelry. So I'm going to keep that because i got to keep that money. And I've got a dollar left. Let's see, what else? What do you, what do you think I should do with this? I think I... Give it to the people who are sick and hungry? I don't, want, I don't really want to do that because I'm thinking that I really need some new curtains at my house. You know, and so I think that I better keep my money. What do y'all think? Is that good? Oh. Oh. We've got a problem. Well, let's see. I've got, I've got a first aid kit here, and I've got some medicine, and I've got some wa bottle of water and a bag of apples. I'm so hungry. I'm going to eat all this, and I'm going to keep this medicine for when I get sick. That'd be good, don't you think? No. <laughs> no? Do we have a problem? Oh, what's the problem? I'm not sharing with the people that need it? Oh, I think you're right. I'm so sorry. Gosh, Mark, Mark, you're so sick. Here, can, do you think maybe some, some well, Pepsi is not going to help, but maybe some, <laughs> <laughs> maybe some Tylenol, and, you know, and, and here, let me, let me give you a little money, because here, maybe you can go get you some cough medicine. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, and, and I can even take some of my time and take you to the doctor. Would that be good? Oh, that'd be great. I'd really that. <laughs> that makes me I'm so glad because maybe I should be sharing. And let's see, Evan, what's your problem now? You're hungry. Didn't you get fed at home? Well, I've got this bag of apples. Wendy, Wendy and Greg, we need to talk. <laughs> but I've got this bag of apples and some water. <laughs> You know, we could, I could take you to the store and we could get some more food. How about this apple, these apples in this? Would that be good? Would that help? And maybe we can go, we can go have some dinner since mom and dad are not feeding you. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I'll even pay. Here, you keep this so you know I'm going to pay, okay? I still have some money. Look, I still have some money. And I 
think, you know, that God has given me so much. You all helped me to remember that. God has given me so much. I really should be sharing with people I don't even know or people I do know that need my time, that need the things that I have and need my money. And then some of this other money, I don't really need those curtains. I don't really need those shoes because I've got a good pair of shoes. I don't really have to go to Putt-Putt and the movie. I could just maybe do the one thing. So I'm going to put some of this into my fishbowl because I know that God's going to do something really good with that money to help other people. Don't you think? <laughs> you need some new shoes, you soldier. <laughs> well, honey, I'll tell you what I'll talk to. I'm going to talk to your mom and daddy about that, okay? Well, that was really nice of you to share your shoes with somebody. Well, they're Batman shoes and they're super cool. But that was nice of you to share your shoes with somebody else. So my point of, of today is God has given all of us so much. We may not have all the money in the world, but we do have time and we do have things, toys, things that we should, can share with other people, clothes, shoes. And when we do get a little bit of money, we can share it with others, especially in our fishbowl where we know that the church and you all will work together and God will help us find something really great to do to help other people with this fishbowl money, right? Okay, let's see. Let's help these people out. You all can, if you'll share with the fishbowl, that'd be great. <laughs> and you all don't have to hold that anymore. Thank you so much. Thank you for our... Our actors, they did a good job, didn't they? Yeah. Let's have a prayer before you get up and go, okay? And I'll also have your, your children's bulletins, okay? We'll get this after our prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you so much, and you have blessed us with so many things and so much in our life. We have families, we have a warm home, a safe bed, a good school, a great church, friends, money that we need for our own food and clothes, just so much, God. You've put people in our life who love us, and now what you're asking us to do is share, like the children have taught us today. We need to share with those who need it. We need to share, even if we don't feel like it, we need to share. So God, help us to be people and children and families that love you so much that we just want to share with others because of that love that you've given us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay, here you go.
Our lesson this morning is Matthew 16, 24 to 26, New Testament section of your pew Bible on page 17. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return of their life? This ends the reading of the text. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Oh, I jumped the gun. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, anoint me with your spirit, that as I speak, by your grace, O God, may it be you who speak through us. And open our hearts and our minds to receive your message, that we may grow by it, and that we may grow in faith and relationship with you through it. That in everything, O God, we may seek to glorify you, that we may put ourselves in your hands for your service, and that in everything that we do, we might witness to your kingdom in our midst. For this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Gravity is a good thing. You can't play basketball without it. In fact, most sports you can't do without it. It's what keeps us grounded. But it can be a tough thing. Particularly if the gravity that we are experiencing is of our own making. Now gravity is defined as the pull of one object against another. The pull of one object against another. But for our purposes this morning, I want us to deal with two types of opposing gravities. One is the gravity of self or the gravity of want against the gravity of God. Because it is in that pull is where you and I live. That's where we exist. And there's no escaping it. There's no way that we can escape gravity. But in this case of two opposing gravities, we can choose which gravity is going to have the greater impact. Now, you see from the title of the sermon this morning, this individual who's carrying this, this figure, carrying this weight. And... That's exactly how life feels sometimes, doesn't it? There isn't anybody in here this morning that doesn't have the weight of something on their back. There isn't anybody in here this morning that doesn't have the weight of some financial responsibility. There isn't anybody in here this morning that doesn't have the weight of their own health issues. There isn't anybody in here this morning that doesn't have the weight of society, to some degree, on their back. But you and I have a tenacity to increase that weight. We have this incredible human tenacity to actually add to the weight that reality already has on us. Let's look at the first slide. There you have a guy running with a tire. That's called basic gravity. That's our financial gravity right there. We have electric bills, we have maybe a mortgage, or we've got rent. If we've got a cell phone, we've got a cell phone bill. If we've got a landline, we've got a landline bill. If we've got the internet, we've got some kind of cable or means in which to get on the internet. If we've got a car, we've got car expenses, maybe a car payment. And for the most part, like the guy running with the tire, we're managing it. 
Oh, it's sometimes we get tired. Sometimes it feels a little heavy, but for the most part, as we go through life, we're dragging our tire and we're managing it. But what happens when want kicks in? Now, before we go to the next slide, I want to describe what want is. I'm not talking about needs. I'm not talking about, you know, children need new shoes. I'm not talking about we need a new water heater. I'm not talking about we need to get the car fixed. I'm talking about wants. Things we don't have to have, but we want. Let's see the next slide. Now, that guy's not running with that, is he? He's dragging it. And that's how a lot of us feel when want takes over. When we are weighed down by the gravity of our wants. Our financial gravity at this point is no longer something we're managing. Now it's managing us. And we're wrestling and we're struggling and we're huffing and we're puffing and straining in order just to stay on top of it. The next slide shows us what happens when we've reached the point we can't manage it anymore. Now the gravity becomes an anchor. Whereas in most times, gravity helps keep us grounded and we move but we don't fall off the earth and, and our feet constantly come down and we're able to balance and so forth. This kind of gravity literally chains us and we can't now move outside of the circumference of the anchor, of the weight that our wants have created. The simple reality is, is how you get there is you, your purchases exceed your income. Everybody knows about the play now, pay later plan, right? It's called credit cards. I can't tell you how many times that I watch on TV where there is some agency that wants to sell us a credit card or give us a credit card. You, they just want to give it to us. You know, when somebody wants to give you something, money, free money, you, it really ought to perk your, you know, your ears up and go, wait a minute. But then there's individuals who basically will tell you, you know, they'll give you a loan, a very short-term loan to your next paycheck. We have them scattered all over Lynchburg. Or then there's the individuals that all you got to do is bring in the title of your car and they'll give you a loan. I got to be honest with you, I really at this point would like to take my car title in and see what they'd give me for my car. <laughs> Not because I want it, just because I'd like to see what it's worth. The reality is, is that once we start that, once our wants have far exceeded our income, our ability to manage it, we're no longer wrestling with debt. We're anchored by it. And what happens is, is what feels like an anchor where we can move around in circumference actually becomes what the next slide represents. Prison. We become imprisoned by the debt that we create. Now, here's where I need to tell you a personal story. Roberta and I had been married maybe six or seven years, maybe a little longer, and I got into the play now, pay later plan. Roberta did not do this. She's not here to defend herself, but I'll defend her. She did not do this. What she's guilty of is misplaced trust and ignorance. Because she had no idea how much debt we had. I did. But I didn't even understand the gravity of my situation until I got to that place. Until I got to the place where I could not see out over the debt. I was not bankrupt. 
and I never took bankruptcy. But I was 30 days from bankruptcy every single month. If we had one more crisis, one more thing that came, I did not know how we would manage it. Because we had, I had maxed out two major credit cards and a store card. And what was interesting was, is that one of those credit cards, which I no longer have and won't do business with that company, kept raising the limit. <laughs> and I was grateful when they did that. Oh, was I stupid. Finally, Roberta realized what was happening. And we had one of those come to Jesus meetings. Now, I know that you all, after these last couple of sermons, are thinking that that's a regular occurrence in our house. <laughs> it's not. But when we have them, we have them. And usually it begins with, how are we going to get out of this, or how are we going to fix this? And then it's followed up with this statement, and I never get to make this one. You ever do that again... Oh, that one I heard loud and clear. Well, at that point, Roberta couldn't do much else. She basically looked at me and she says, you fix this. You got us in it, you fix it. So I went in prayer, and I prayed to God, and I said, God, I don't know how to fix this. You're going to have to show me. Now, here's the interesting thing. I never prayed, God, send me money. Never did I pray, God, send me money. Because I had already come to the realization, I had my come to Jesus meeting. I don't know how to manage money. That's what I came away with. So I said this, Lord, show me what to do and I'll do it. Whatever it is, you just tell me, whatever it is, send whoever it is that needs to come my way to educate me so that I can get out of this, so I can straighten this out. And I promise you, I will never do this again. Well, sure enough, God sent me somebody that told me what to do. And I did exactly what I said I would do. I did exactly what the person told me. The first thing I did was I cut up all those credit cards. Can't borrow any more money. We ain't gone any deeper in debt. But I'm so far down in the well, I can't even begin to see the entrance. Then I said, you know, okay, I'm not borrowing anymore. I'm not going any deeper in debt. What do I do now? And the guy said to me, okay. He says, there's several ways we can do this. He says, we can take the smallest loan and get rid of it first. And I said, do you have any idea what the minimum payments are? He says, I got a really good idea. And he says, and you're struggling to just make the minimum payment. I said, no, I'm doing a little bit better than the minimum payment, but not much. You know how many years it's going to take to pay off the smallest one? He says, yeah, I got a really good idea. He says, we're going to do this. And he found a way for me to get a consolidation loan at decent interest, something less than 21%. And I got it. I consolidated all those credit cards and a couple of other debts that we had. And it brought it into a payment that I could make. And he says, now, here's what you do. You don't make the minimum payment on this. What can you afford to pay? Here's what you've been paying before. How much of that can you afford to pay? I said, this. He says, all right. You pay that every month regardless of whatever else is happening, you pay that every month. If you can't pay that, you call me. You don't just make changes, you call me. He held me accountable. That's important. As the months went by and the years went by, let me emphasize that, years. It took me 12 years to get out of that. I've only been married 32 years. <laughs> I spent a huge part of our married life either in secret debt 
or in the consequences thereof. <laughs> Talk about a prison. After about four or five years, we had whittled that debt down to the point where now my income was starting to go up, my debt was coming down, my disposable cash was getting a lot better, and we began to put away savings. That was the other thing he emphasized. He says, you've got to get some savings. But here's something else we did. Roberto had an income. When we had that little come to Jesus meeting, Roberto said, my income now is my income. Still her income. She took her paycheck and we split the bills. And she took the bills she agreed to pay and she's always paid them. And I took all the rest. And all the debt bills were on my side of the debit. Hers were over here and what that did was it gave part of her income that we could put into savings. As her situation, as our situation got better, now listen to this, I started taking bills from her side. Do you hear that? I took bills from her side. That's that tire we first saw. The management part. I took those from her. Here's why. Because we made her income the income that we saved. Because I knew she'd do it. I knew that she would do it religiously. Not only did we have much less debt, we were beginning to bring the debt down, but now we began to have a real substantial savings. So that when a crisis came along, guess what happened? We didn't have to go running to a credit card, which, by the way, we're still cut up. And I called the company. I said, do not send one. They said, well, we've got to send one. Of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. I'll have the scissors waiting when it arrives in the mail. Well, you know, we... We could lower the mail, you know, lower down the limit. You can lower down whatever you want, but that credit card's going to get cut and thrown into trash as soon as it comes in the mail. And if I don't get it, you can guarantee my wife will. <laughs> now, it took years. It took years. Talk about a sentence. Talk about a criminal sentence. And here's the horrible thing. Nobody put me there. Nobody put me there. I willfully walked into the cell and slammed the door, locked it, and threw away the key. Because of one. Because of the gravity of the idea that I could have what I wanted with no consequence. God wants us to be generous people who participate with him in the ministry of Jesus Christ in the world today. But how many of us in here today can't do that? Because we're in a prison of our own making. Because we have got ourselves into a financial situation where the gravity of our want literally is keeping us from being able to serve our faith. I'm not talking about just what we give to church. I'm talking about your offerings. I'm talking about literally the living of our, your life. Can you imagine what it was like as a minister who could not give to a charitable situation in his own church because of that prison? Can you imagine what my witness was like? Can you imagine the sermons I couldn't preach because to preach them would have been hypocritical? Now, I want you to think of yourself for a moment. I want you to look at yourself, and I want you to, to just center on yourself for just a moment. How many of that is true? How much of that is true for you, too? How much of that is true for you, too? Not because you don't have income. Not because you make this much money, and you've got this much bills, and there just isn't enough left over. I'm not talking about the reality of financial burdens. I'm talking about the reality of wants that create a prison. And that's what it does. And you can't be the witness in the community and in the church and in your family that you want to be, that God calls you to be, because you're worshiping another God 
the God of self. And there's no way I can stand up here today and look down on you. I know I'm high and lifted up on this stage, but literally, I can't look down on you. I'm standing here telling you I've done this. And it took me years to straighten it out. But with God's help, with a sincere and unwavering commitment on my part and staying with God and, and, and not being willing to, to go back on that, I got out of it. But it wasn't on my own. Every step of the way, and let me tell you, there were some wrestling matches. There were times where God said, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing with that card? By the way, I, I got a credit card. What are you doing with that card? I was just going to get this. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. <laughs> there were no big purchases in any of that credit card. There wasn't a single large purchase that was ever put in. It was $20 here, $30 here, $40 there. Boy, that boggles your mind, doesn't it? We had a yard sale here just a couple of a week ago, didn't we? We had a yard sale at one of my churches at Bethany. It took me 18 trips to get all the stuff out of the house that I just swore I had to have that I put on that credit card to take it to the yard sale to get rid of. It wasn't large. So when I pulled out a credit card after I got a credit card again, and, you know, and God would go, ho, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ron. Are we going back into that prison? And I'd look at the purchase. I'd look at the card, and I'd look in the memory bank, and I'd put the card back in my wallet. Want is a horrible, horrible gravity. Not because, not because of its intensity, but because it sneaks up on you. It sneaks up on you. I never saw it coming. I kept thinking, hey, I deserve this. I work hard for my money. I put in all these hours and, and I make all these sacrifices over here. I deserve this. And it's not that much. It's just this little thing. It doesn't cost that much. No, that didn't. It was all the other things on top of it that did. The next slide, I think, will help put things in perspective. This is the story that you heard me preach on not that long ago. It's the rich young man that came to Jesus. It's found in Matthew 19. We heard it this morning in Sunday school class. He comes to Jesus, and he's, he's, he's concerned about his relationship. He really is looking for assurance of his salvation. He's, he's looking for something that will make him feel, and give him the feeling that he deeply needs and desires. And Jesus tells him at one point in the interchange, if you would be perfect, sell all your possessions, give them to the poor, and come follow me. What you need to understand about that statement is that what Jesus is offering him is a chance to live completely in the kingdom God has provided but to do that, he had to give up his kingdom of self. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. It says he walked away sorrowful. He walked away sorrowful. In the scripture you heard this morning, Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world to satisfy all of his wants and yet forfeit his soul. What does it gain? Twenty odd years ago, that's exactly how I felt. Exactly how I felt. I had the world. 
but I had no peace with God. What gain is it? The simple reality is, is that God doesn't want this kind of life for any of us because it's no life. It's no life. God doesn't want that for us. It's not about you can't have things you want. It's not that you can't go out and have a nice dinner out. It's not that you can't have that new pair of shoes or you can't have that new phone that you want. It's not, it's not that. It's not that. It's that those things, those things are temporary. The Bible calls them temporal, which means they don't last. But we want them so bad because they're shiny and they're fantastic and they're wonderful and everybody else seems to have them. And we want it to be what everybody else has. And we want to have what everybody else has. And, and, and we think that if we get it, then we'll be happy, don't we? But how happy are we? Really? How happy are we? God wants to give us real happiness. And the only place you can find that is in your relationship with God. But the problem with having a relationship with God is that self's got to get out of the number one slot. And God's got to move in. And with God as number one, there are a whole lot of other things. There are a whole lot of other things that come with that that bring happiness. And they have nothing to do with self. They have everything to do with God. That's the weight of want. That's the weight of want. That's the gravity that can hold us down so much it's like living on Jupiter. Living on Jupiter a 150-pound man would be like 350 pounds. Just to walk around would take every amount of energy that individual had for only a brief period of time before it would wear him out. And that's exactly what it's like when you get into that kind of condition with your wants. You're under that kind of gravity that eventually you just can't move. Let's look at the last slide. That's what God wants for us. Freedom. You see the individual standing there, their arms outstretched and the chains hanging down? That's symbolized the reality that we live in a world where we have the burdens of reality on us. But they don't bind us. They don't bind. But as we add to those chains and we attach them to things that are not in the kingdom of God, they can. They do. And they can turn into a prison. God wants that freedom. He wants to set us free from the chains that bind us so that we can live the life he has planned. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, help us see the freedom you offer more than we see the pleasure we seek. For our good, our best good, and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God with our tithes and offerings.
All that you have given to us make us grateful. But receive this which we give back to you for the service of the ministry of Jesus Christ and for the work of your kingdom. And make it flourish that we, O oh God, 
may continue in your service. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This time we enter into a time of prayer. Are there any joys or concerns that you would like to lift up this morning? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Thank you, Sue. We want to remember Becky. Continue. You are very much in our prayers <laughs> and remain in our prayers. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. And by the way, we're praying for celebration. <laughs> Anyone else? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, there are so many things in this life that can weigh us down. We realize the weight of health issues. As we get older, oh God, they seem to come from nowhere and then they just park themselves in our lives. And they can be very, very difficult. So we pray, oh God, for all the individuals who are weighed down with circumstances of health, sickness, injury, recovery. We also pray, O oh God, for those who are dealing with loss, those who are grieving the death of a loved one. That's another weight that life can throw at us and can be very hard to deal with. And we pray for your continued presence, O oh God, with each and every one of these individuals to help them bear the weight of what they're under. But we also pray for those, O oh God, who live with the weight of anticipation. Sometimes that's anticipation of good news. But in every anticipation of good news, there's also the anticipation of bad news. So we pray for these individuals that they, O oh God, may continue to feel your presence, that they're ready to deal with what comes their way. And if it be your will, O oh God, we pray for a spirit of celebration. We pray, O oh God, for this, your church. We are your people. Every day, help us be reminded of that. Help us every day to be reminded that we have people who are there for us, who we can be there for them, and that in this community we call church, your grace can abound, your love can become evident and your mercy ever-reaching, ever-lifting. Help us, O oh God, to be and strengthen this, your church. We pray, O oh God, for our nation. And, O oh God, to be honest with you, it's getting hard to know even what to pray for. because we feel as if those who are leading us aren't listening to you anymore. We wonder if they even know you. And if they know you, why aren't they listening? We pray for our nation. Make your wisdom prevail. Teach us your will. Show us your way and give us the strength to walk in it. And help us always, O oh God, to be drawn and abide with Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus, which is there for us every day. And help us even now to pray from our hearts that prayer which he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Let us join in singing our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. We are always under a weight. To live in this world requires of us to have income, to have resources, but it even more requires us to manage them well. To so manage them that we can stay out of the prisons we often build for ourselves. To break loose of the chains that would bind us so that we can live in such a way that we can be of service to God. That we can live in such a way that we can live as brothers and sisters, neighbors and friends to each other. God doesn't want the life that would hold us back, constrict us, bind us, imprison us, in our wants. He wants the life for us that can set us free to all the joy, all the fulfillment, and all the blessings His kingdom seeks to provide. The choice is up to us. Go in God's grace.